Hi. Hello, everyone. It's Mary Lynn Harris here with uh, Creating Impact. And I'm also here with Radisha. And I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell us a little bit how she got started, what she's doing. It's very unique, and I'd love to hear more about it. So, Radisha, you want to like to introduce yourself and tell us how you kind of got started with what you're doing right now. Okay, so thank you so much for having me, Mary Lynn. Mm -hmm. My name is Rashida Kamaria Williams, and I'm the Chief Empowering Officer and founder of Empower Flower Girl, which is a social enterprise that is on a mission to transform the way young people relate to one another, but also, most importantly, how they relate to themselves. Mm. Uh, a lot of the work that I've been doing probably over the past 20 plus years is centered around mentoring and empowering young people, um, mostly to help young people to realize the power that they already have within mm -hmm. so that they can make powerful contributions to the planet. So what we do is help them live above those challenges they may be facing in and out of the classroom from cyberbullying to societal pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that we know that many young people uh, are experiencing cyberbullying as well right. as traditional bullying. And, mm -hmm. you know, bullying has been around for centuries, <laughs> right? But it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Uh, but, it, but in a digital age, things have totally changed. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a new day, a new age, and they're trying to navigate, their parents are trying to navigate uh, social media. And it can definitely be a challenge, but uh, my whole goal and mission is to help them be safe, smart, and kind online mm -hmm. and off offline as well. Of course. <laughs> so tell me, you mentioned about how to know themselves or educate themselves or empower themselves. So what, what are some of the things that you're finding the youth today are facing? In that yes. Well, you know what? That's uh, a very good question because th there are so many challenges that they're right. facing, but but they have numerous opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I talk about cyberbullying, yes, that's one aspect of their online interactions, but there are so many wonderful and useful tools for uh, social media, just the internet itself. And uh, I, I want to be able to help them to utilize these tools that they have so that they can make a difference. Um, and, and when I say helping young people better relate to one another and themselves, I believe that if they have a level of empathy as well as self-esteem and feeling confident and being able mm -hmm. to express themselves, that will make their interactions with each other uh, that much better, right? Because right. right. yeah, they feel confident about who they are uh, they are less likely to engage in, in bullying and, and digital harassment, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And they, it, it works. It's the same for adults as well, right? right. Uh, when we feel good about ourselves, we want to do more, um, and we want to create a kinder world uh, when mm -hmm. we feel good about who we are. So I think that's vitally right. important. Right, right. So yeah. So do you find that the cyber bullying is worse than the normal kind of? at school type bullying or do you find it's about equal well um it, it really depends on the type of bullying mm -hmm. um, whether it's uh done digitally or if it's uh physical it can it can be painful it can mm -hmm. be traumatic for young people however i will say that with cyberbullying the difference is uh, it, they're both a, yeah. a power imbalance, right? right. You, you have this imbalance of power mm -hmm. uh, amongst those who are doing the bullying, those who are perpetrators of bullying behavior, uh, and then those who are on the receiving end, right? And whether right. you're being uh, physically threatened, pushed around, uh, knocked down, that can be traumatic and hurtful. However, with cyberbullying, the fact that it really doesn't go away mm. uh, that that makes it that much worse and we have seen time and time again where young people they may share some confident confidential information with one another things that they don't want everyone to know they right. may send a text to their friend right. and then their so-called friend ends up forwarding that text or sending it in a group chat for everyone to see right, right. that lives on I mean, you know, if someone pushed you down in uh, in the schoolyard or in the playground, mm -hmm. right, you may be able to get over that. Uh, but something um, that can live, live for on, forever. yeah, <laughs> it, it can live forever. That's yeah. right. And 
And that seems to uh, be uh, exacerbated, of course, mm -hmm. by by all of the technology uh, from the smartphones to social media, but also in online gaming. Uh, right. That that's mm -hmm. a tool as well that young people use to, you know, they're they're on online having fun playing games but in some of the chats uh, there's a lot of cyberbullying and even hate speech that happens in some of those chats right right so what do you think some of their opportunities are to get out of that bullying or out of that um not feeling uh empowered what do you think that some of our opportunities are there i, I imagine that parents have a big role in this you know they would have to besides their child you know who's not really mature enough maybe to handle these situations yes that, and you bring up a good point because parents definitely have an opportunity to help young people uh, to help their children but any of us whether mm -hmm. we're parents or not uh, we could help young relatives mm -hmm. our uh, neighbors right mm -hmm. uh, yeah. children in our community and a huge way that we can do that is through mentoring. And I could definitely talk about that momentarily, yeah. but yeah. I believe that uh, parents, when they're knowledgeable about where their children are engaging online and the types of activities that they're engaging in, mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that that can definitely help. If you mm -hmm. don't know the types of sites that your child uh, is, those types of sites that they're on, if you are clueless about how they work, yeah. Or even or even the appropriate ages, because some yeah. of these sites, well, most of them have an age limit, but there are some nine year olds on sites where you're supposed to be 16 or 17 to engage. Right. Uh, you know, because with all of this information, there's a lot of responsibility uh, right. that comes with that. And mm -hmm. oftentimes parents, you know, they may not have had those conversations. Uh, so I know some parents that actually do before they give their child a phone. Uh, they go over some rules and some guidelines about using that phone, uh, right. or they may have some parental controls on that so that their kids are not able to access all of the information, right? right. So I think that, yes, parents definitely play a role, uh, especially our ability to be role models. Right. And I, I say that because we each, as adults, mm -hmm. uh, we each have a responsibility to right. also uh, be models of, of kindness and um, compassion for them. So even our interactions online, you know, young people see that. Um, yeah. there, there's so much that happens. We see it with celebrities and politicians all the time. It, right. it, so much drama, <laughs> toxicity that's drama out there. sells, right? So that's yeah. why we continue to do what they're doing, right? And not, not thinking about the consequences of what they're doing. Sort of like the teenager doing something telling a friend and confidence about that. And before you know it, they share it, everybody. And they just, you know, it's like, oh, it's drama. I'll get attention. I'll keep doing this, you know? And then before you know it, it's caused a lot of harm, you know? So yes, it definitely yeah. can cause a lot of harm. Um, just the having psychological safety, I think is yeah. very important, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for young people and adults as well. People, adults even get bullied at work. Right. And at least uh, at work, you can go to HR and, and talk about these things. But with our young people, it, who who do they really have to talk to about these things? Um, you know, some of them have school counselors. Mm -hmm. uh, they could talk to it about their teachers. But uh, I found that working with schools, that uh, many of the school counselors, they may have a caseload of about 200 to 300 right. young people. Right. But right. who can young people turn to? Um, mm -hmm that may be outside of their parents. And, and that's right. one of the reasons why yeah, I definitely encourage adults to be mentors for young people because so many of them just need someone to talk to, to vent to, uh, to, to just listen to them. Right, right. I call, I call it the listening circle. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your mentoring program that you wanted to really share about. Yeah, so actually I am a huge proponent and advocate for mentoring. Mm -hmm. uh, I have volunteered as a mentor in the past. That's actually what inspired me to start Empowered Flower Girl uh, for about, I would say for about 10 years, mm -hmm. I had been mentoring with a local nonprofit and I had noticed that the girls that I was mentoring along with my nieces uh, who were teenagers at the time were just 
facing some challenges in and out of school with right. friends and their relationships with friends, as well as, again, their relationship to themselves, having issues with confidence and self-esteem. Right. Uh, so I wanted to do something for the girls that I was mentoring, as well as my nieces. And I actually wrote a manuscript for a book that I actually didn't publish. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't publish it until five years later. Yeah. Uh, but I had the manuscript and I used that as a curriculum to, to start mm -hmm. things off because I was getting requests from the organization to come speak to other volunteers because of some of the successes I was having uh, with the girls in my group. Mm -hmm. And then, then I got requests from a school. Uh, I got a request from a school to come and speak, and I really didn't know what to <laughs> what to do. They were like, "Hey, why don't you come to our school? Uh, how much do you charge? How much is it going to be? Yeah. What are you going to talk about?" And at that moment, I was like, "Ah, I really need to get something together because yeah. there is a huge need out there." Right. And I, I started Empowered Flower Girl. Now, Empowered Flower Girl doesn't uh, operate a mentoring program, mm -hmm. but but I offer workshops to help adults mm -hmm. who are thinking about becoming a mentor. And I also speak uh, quite a bit about mm -hmm. the benefits and how mentoring makes a difference for young people of all backgrounds. I did a TEDx talk back in 2017 uh, mm -hmm. about the power of mentoring and how it can make a difference for young people of diverse backgrounds, no matter mm -hmm. uh, if they're elementary age or yeah. college age, uh, young people who uh, may be transitioning out of foster care, as well as those who may be LGBTQ plus. Mm -hmm. uh, youth of so many different backgrounds. Right. Uh, basically, all young people are can, youth can youth benefit from or, you know, all those yeah. all those people, right? Yeah, yeah. Even young people who are gifted and talented, right. and those who are in the honor roll. Uh, they could use career mentors in, in mm -hmm. a lot of uh, instances that can be beneficial to them as they're transitioning um, into college or from college to career. So uh, there are numerous opportunities, but right. you know, volunteering as a mentor really is what inspired me to take right. the leap and to start Empowered Flower Girl and start doing more consulting and speaking in the area of uh, the benefits of mentoring. Oh, okay. So Empowered um, Girl, um, flower, flower Girl? Empowered or, Flower Girl, yes. Yeah. Empowered Flower Girl. That's an interesting name. Um, so with that, what that organization, what do you do for people? For Is it just for girls, for women, or how does that work? Yeah, so that's always a great question because people will ask, well, you know, what? let me just back <laughs> up for a second. It's interesting because you mentioned the name Empowered Flower Girls is interesting. I did have someone ask, well, do you all sell flowers? And you know what? <laughs> that is, <laughs> I mean, that, that's, uh, that's a very fair question. Yeah. Uh, we don't, we don't sell flowers. But <laughs> I absolutely love flowers. Yeah. And honestly, I came up with a name because I was a flower girl in family weddings when I yeah. was a kid and I got tired of being a family flower girl. <laughs> Seriously, I asked my mom, I said, do I have to do this again? Do I have to be in more weddings as a flower girl? And she said, well, if you don't want to, you don't have to. So at that moment, I became an empowered flower girl and the name sort of stuck. <laughs> I learned to say no. <laughs> I learned to say no at an early age. So I was, I was yeah. empowered then. But uh, to answer your question, uh, Empowered Flower Girl, we actually work with young people regardless of gender. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we also have programs and workshops for adults as well, especially mm -hmm. those who are purpose-driven and want to move into the youth empowerment space or those who are launching nonprofits or those who mm -hmm. want to start a mentoring program or add a mentoring program to uh, their current uh, organization or their program offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been a mentoring consultant with the state of Michigan. I, I'm based in Michigan, but I work with organizations, school districts, uh, and individuals throughout the U.S., Canada, U.K., mm -hmm. South well, Africa. Sounds so, very interesting. So what is your favorite country so far to go out, go out and teach all this? You have one? <laughs> well, I, 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 well, because we can work virtually, there's yeah. places that I haven't been. I haven't been to South Africa, but I worked with uh, organizations in South Africa as well as the UK. 
Uh, I do hope to visit both places someday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I will say that <laughs> I will say that you know I receive a lot of love and support uh, mm. from our neighbors to the north in Canada. Like yeah. I live I live in the Metro Detroit area, and we're um, right across the river from yeah. Ontario. Yeah. And um, Empowered Flower Girl has a program called She's Empowered, where we recognize and um, honor mm. the achievements of young people, especially uh, those who are female identifying or gender expansive, who are giving back to their communities in meaningful ways. So mm -hmm. our She's Empowered program uh, recognizes young people and we reward them. Uh, give them shouts out on social media, send them a swag bag and these sorts of things. And yeah. I often get lots of submissions uh, from young people throughout Canada, mm -hmm. um, whether that's um, Ontario or uh, other parts, uh, Calgary. Yeah, we- uh, Calgary, really, Alberta, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we really uh, just love working with, with young people and, and those who work to support uh, mm -hmm. and empower young people you know, throughout the world, actually. Right, right. Yeah, when you're on Zoom, I'm sure you can work with the world, right? Versus yeah. actually being in person in front of them. But yeah, so cool, it's cool. So um, anything else that you would like us to know more about you or your group or how we can help you or support you? Yes, definitely. And thank you for the opportunity. And I just want to commend you for uh, using your platform to give uh, to give space to have these type of conversations. Yeah. Well, they're right? very important, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I would definitely love to connect with others who are in the youth empowerment space, mm -hmm. uh, as well as those who are inspired to make a difference for young people in their communities, mm -hmm. uh, whether they whether they run nonprofits or are educators, right? I'm always looking to connect and ex expand my network, mm -hmm. but also, you know, Empower Flower Girl offers workshops and coaching for mm -hmm. adults in that area. We have our Girl World Peace Academy program, which I, I really love, again, mm -hmm. for purpose-driven professionals, um, because I want to support others yeah. who are really in this work. Uh, it's about transforming lives. And there are so many people out here who have uh, so much to give, right. right? But they may not know where to start. They are, have been thinking, you know, I, I want to make mm -hmm. a difference. I know I have it in me to give back to my community mm -hmm. in a meaningful way, but they just may need some additional support. And uh, I'm here to help support that. You know, yeah. I, I tell everyone that they should have a good vibe tribe. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, and I, and I, I have a good vibe tribe and I love to be a part of others, you know, and, and they're good vibe tribes. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely connect with Empowered Flower Girl. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I think we all have, something to give you know right. each and every one of us our experiences uh, some people may doubt that they have the power they they may doubt well I don't have the accolades and I don't have the fancy job titles but honestly that's young people don't need that they don't care yeah. about that yeah <laughs> they really don't they just they just want someone who will listen to them Mm -hmm. who will listen to them without judgment and mm -hmm. who, who will be there for them, right? right? You don't you don't have to be perfect. In fact, you know, they don't need the perfection. They need to know, oh yeah, this person is a human. They've made mistakes, but this yeah. is how they were able to overcome them. So mm -hmm. I think that once even adults realize that, they can have the confidence to really put themselves out there and pursue their passions as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you were bullied a lot as a child too? And that's one reason why you started your little empowered girl. Yes, definitely. Uh, that That is one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about the work that I'm doing mm -hmm. because in middle school, I was teased and bullied relentlessly in particular yeah. seventh grade. Seventh grade uh, was a huge challenge for me. Yeah. I was teased. I was teased for being smart. I was teased for the music that I listened to. I was teased for the way I spoke. You know, my speaking voice, kids would call me a nerd. They would say I was weird. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's quite interesting yeah. that I was teased for the way I spoke 
But now I make a difference and a living as yeah. a speaker and public relations professional. Right. <laughs> you know, so that's something that I actually tell young people. I, um, I, I've participated in career day in, yeah. in a couple schools in the area. And that's what I tell young people. I said, look, some of the things that you are teased and bullied about and actually excluded about when you're younger, uh, they can actually uh, be very in inspiring for you and mm -hmm. other people. Those things that you were teased and bullied about can actually become careers, right? Right, right. Who, who, you know, yeah. the, the kids who teased and bullied me for the, the way I spoke, now they're looking at, oh, Rashida's doing a TEDx talk. <laughs> 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 So yeah. I'm just, I'm just all about encouraging young people. Yeah. Embrace your weirdness. Yeah. They call you weird or, or unique. It's okay. We should all strive to be our, the best version of ourselves, right. To be right. our own person, to blaze our own trails. Yeah. Yeah. And when you said, now we can say nerd is a very popular word and we can yes. say, I'm a nerd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Be proud of it. <laughs> exactly. Versus, yes. even, you know, when we're geek. 6, 14, 15, it's like, I'm not nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Even geeks, you know, the, yeah. the whole geek culture is, uh, really has really become like a, a thing, right. For people. And the young people are proud to call themselves geeks. So I just love how things have transitioned. That yeah. it's it's cool to be smart now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, so cool. Yeah, I remember. Um, I used to be teased a lot to constantly bullied. And then many years ago, I had a couple of guys. I guess who were really bad with me. Call me up and say, "I want to apologize to you." And I said, "Who are you?" <laughs> I mean, I've totally forgotten about all this. But <clears throat> oh yeah, okay. Um, I I just want to apologize. And I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, that's cool. Thanks. And who are you? <laughs> right. Kind of thing. So you know, I think people, you know, maybe they realize more so when they're the bullier down the road and they have kids and the kids are going through it and they're oh my god you're like i i was worse than that or you know whatever maybe not or they just you know started thinking about you know themselves like how do they act and um doing some self-evaluation and so they realize oh my god i was that bad you know, or they, you know, whatever the reason is for that. Yeah. And, and I was going to say is, is some redemption and <laughs> some people need to clear their conscience uh, because many people don't realize this, but uh, those who are the perpetrators of bullying, mm -hmm. those young people who bully others, you know, they're going through uh, challenges and, and trauma usually in, at home. Right. Uh, they, they may be facing issues inside of their home. Some have been abused mm -hmm. or come from families where drug abuse and al alcoholism is a problem. Others are experiencing low self-esteem and challenges uh, with their self-esteem, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them project onto other people. So as they say, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And, and oftentimes bullies, those who uh, have engaged in the bullying, they also as adults right. even have issues with anxiety and depression. And, and for some people, yes, they have to clear their conscience. And <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's important. And, you know, we may yeah. have forgotten about it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah. I know I never, I never forgot the students that bullied me, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, receiving those apologies can, can feel good. Sometimes it seems like they may come too late. Um, you know, unfortunately for some young people, uh, they don't, they never get those apologies and they mm -hmm. internalize it and end up doing self-harm. But uh, for, for those who come clean and, and apologize and, and ask for forgiveness, you know, that's, uh, that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if we all just a little step back and say, okay, what part of this conversation or situation do I own? Cause we're all a part of it, some aspect of it. Right. That's Definitely. why I was, I'm really against gossip and, and cause gossip is creates toxic workplaces and it also becomes a bullying tool to use. Right. Yeah. 
definitely. As you were saying, you know, you have one friend sharing a private moment with the other person before, you know what, they're sharing with all their friends and then all their friends are coming to, to gossip about that person. And now the situation is kind of blown out of proportion. And um, yeah, we have to hold people who are leaders in our country or celebrities to account for the damage they are actually creating. You know, you hear it about it all the time. It's like, oh, get over it. Like, you know, like, but yeah, we all need to hold them accountable because they are creating the mess, you know, the, that's going on, in the, you know, with children or youth today, you know, for sure. Yes, it, yep, they're creating it, they're per perpetuating it. And the more we engage with it, we also are guilty, right? right? right. Those right. of us, yeah, those of us who have these platforms. You know how are we engaging i, I know some mm -hmm. people some people also will go back and forth and uh say mean things to celebrities uh, i think it was is it jimmy kimmel or, or one of jimmy fallon jimmy kimmel yeah uh, who would meet read the mean tweets okay <laughs> uh, the celebrities would go on the show and they would read uh very horrendous tweets uh, or offensive tweets that were made with uh with their name or uh tag in there yeah, and uh, some of them were very cringy, uh, and people have said some very mean things yeah. right, to celebrities. I'm like, they're human too, um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's just fascinating that it doesn't matter how popular you are, how much money you have, uh, the, how beautiful you are, uh, you can be exposed to bullying. You can mm -hmm. uh, be a person who is on the receiving end of uh, the bullying and, and digital harassment. So I think that if each of us takes personal accountability mm -hmm. and, and just really looks out for one another, I wore this shirt, it says, be kind. Be kind, if, yeah. <laughs> if, if, we were, if we were all just uh, kinder to yeah. one another, uh, I think the world would be a better place. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, I love having you on the show, uh, Rashinda, and maybe we can do another show. I do have a couple of people I'll introduce you to that I think you will, you guys will collaborate with each other very well. And um, But till then, um, any final words you'd like to say before we close off here? Yes, indeed. Again, thank you so much for, mm -hmm. for uh, having You're me welcome. on the show and thank you for uh, the the platform that you have to <laughs> recognize uh, people who are out there making an impact in the world and uh, just whoever needs a good vibe tribe and wants to be a part of the good vibe tribe uh, be sure to connect and engage with empowered flower girl on instagram or facebook as well as linkedin yeah. at empowered flower girl okay great thank you thank you so much and thank you. i'll be sure to put the when i send out the message i'll be sure to Include your links so people can reach out to you and get more information and maybe you'll get some more speaking gigs who knows right, <laughs> right. you never know but thank yeah. you so much I appreciate okay you. thank you so much for joining me today okay take care bye you too bye